Welcome back everybody. My name is Jackie Pamote. You're watching part two of my conversation with Jay Israel. We are speaking about the growing culture of cults in Africa. This would include neighboring countries and of course um, South Africa. Um, it, it's a very tough conversation. Welcome everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's a very tough conversation and um, I know a lot of people Many people will say I'm being too harsh on the guests, but it's just my way of getting to the core of the truth so that I also answer the questions that you were asking and I also ask him the questions that you would probably be asking. But I am definitely going to open the comment section um, so that you guys are able to ask him questions. It's the end of our conversation, so please bear with us. Um, I do promise that it will be an insightful conversation and eye opening. Thank you for coming back. I think you're fine seated like that. Don't change positions or zoom in oh. or anything like that. Okay. We, we can hear you. So I'm going to switch off the comments. So I'm just going to repeat a little bit of what I said earlier on is okay. that we, we, we live in cities and some people are in villages and so forth, but the, the, the principle is honestly the same. We, we date people that we know nothing about. So you exactly. meet a guy in church, at school, university, at a mall, at a club, at a restaurant, at a yacht party, wherever, right? Mm -hmm. But it, you never really know who they are it's because it's exactly. not like people who are in cults are written on their foreheads and they will, they will openly tell you what they do because it's their secret and it's their brotherhood and it's how they make money not everybody's gonna stand on a pulpit and say this is how i make my money judge me if you want to they're not gonna say that because it's what's sacred to them right so my question to you was that you're a handsome fella i saw you today and i saw the comments people said oh my god he's so handsome no wonder he people flocked at his church no wonder um obviously excluding the fact that there was cultivism in, in, in the church, but just from your appearance and the way you articulate yourself, and you're not a short person, you're quite tall, so you have the stature. Thank you. Wait, uh, hold on. No. Hey. Uh -uh. You're we not, not going short. To, we, we're not going to pass that as if you just didn't say something very important. I'm not short. I'm very tall. <laughs> you're not. You're not. So that on its own has some kind of presence right um so in the church when you were the pa a pastor in zimbabwe now this is before you came to south africa were women throwing themselves at you and were you receiving them and the age demographics was it younger people older people um bisexual people gay people what were the what was the arrangement would you openly uh, say okay anybody who throws themselves at me i'll take because now i need to feed this cult well i'll be uh, okay i think um f first and foremost we women are attracted to power of course whether you yes. like it or not power yes. is attractive yeah mm. women are attracted to money because money is attractive Money is security. Mm. Money is security. Mm. So anyway, where there's power, besides the looks, besides the fact that somebody is handsome, as long as there's power, as mm. long as there's money, for money is power, you know, as long mm. as there's power, whether spiritual or physical power, women will always throw themselves. So it's not a matter of saying, were women throwing themselves at me? I mean, I had power, so definitely they had, uh, you know, they were throwing themselves at me. But one thing about me is that um, I always stick to my notion, men are hunters. Men are hunters naturally, even biblically, according to the Bible. Eve never went to Adam to say, hi, Adam, I like you. No, it was Adam who said to Eve, rip, uh, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, you know. Mm -hmm. So to me, once anyone, once I see somebody trying to throw themselves at me, there's a little pride that I have inside me that's, that quickly says, you know what, <laughs> no, you know. So 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it happens everywhere. Women throw themselves at men everywhere, whether in the club, whether in church, whether in politics, you know. So now going back to the things that um, you had acquired in the cult, like the, the, the medicine yeah. and the things that created miracles, what were, what were those things? Um, okay. I got power to uh, attract whatever I wanted. How so? There's something that is called uh, do as I say. The first time that I introduced Do As I Say was in East London. I think it was 2016 or 2017. No, it was 2016. Because remember, with, with, with uh, spiritual things, you grow in them. There is a Bible that I used to read. It's called the Satanic Bible. There's a book. There's books that I used to read. One of them is a demonic book. A book that... Um, teaches you how to operate in the demonic kingdom, in the demonic world. It's a book that teaches you how to communicate with demons, how to send demons to people and go and exorcise those demons again. So you would come to church clean as, yeah, as snow. And then I send a demon inside of you. After sending the demon in you, I come and I exorcise that demon again. So okay, somebody well watching from home will begin to think, oh my God, this pastor is so powerful. So when that demon comes and possesses you, it says whatever that I ask. And it only speaks whatever that agrees with me. You know, okay, so how would you do that? Do you do it through a dream? No. It, do you it, pray for it in, in the church? At times, probably through laying of hands. By laying one of hands, I'll, I'll definitely transfer something inside of you. But now remember, for such things, I wouldn't do such things to people in general, to everybody. I would look at those with money. Even when it came to prophecies, I wouldn't just give prophecies to poor people. My prophecies were specifically for people with money. Because remember, this is a gift that I acquired through money. So I have to uh, maintain it through money. So once I, with me, I would know. If people in East London will tell you, with me, I would know if you have money or you don't have money. Whether you look broke but you have money, I would know. I would know the amount of money in your account. I would know the bank pin card, uh, the the pin numbers of people. I would tell them in church that this is your bank you bank with. I'm seeing this pin. There's pin code 5044. Videos are there on YouTube of what I'm talking about. 5044, this is your pin number. There's so much amount of money inside. Now, if I tell you, give me half of that money, you won't refuse because already you know that, uh, you know, you, or, or people will be thinking, you know, this is God speaking. I'm not saying this because I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to embarrass myself. I'm not ashamed of speaking about these things because this is now my past. I can only speak about it because it's not my testimony. It's no longer things that it's no longer me, but it's somebody else. So that is why I can speak about all these things without even blinking my eyes, because this is what I used to do. This is how I used to operate. I would visit people in their dreams. I would come and tell you in your dreams. Let's say I want your car, the car that you're driving. I'll come to your dreams and I'll tell you. You will see me in your dreams telling you that you must give me your car. And when you, come, when, when you come to my office to tell me that I saw you in my dreams and you said that um, I must give you my car, I'll tell you it's God speaking. How do you take me to court? How do you go to court and say he stole my car or he took my car away? No, it was dreams. You know, it was dreams. But now you as a practicing cultist right how would you do that what is would, the, the the what what is the ceremony that you would do to achieve that at night every night at 12 midnight i used to um i used to kneel down in my in my bedroom 12 midnight every night without fail 
even up to now, I still do that, but now I pray at 12 midnight. I pray because I understand the power of prayer and everything, you know. So at 12 midnight, I had a white robe that I used to wear. Then I would light my candles in front of me, you know. I would light my candles, different colors. I had red, I had white, and I had blue. I would light them in front of me. And then I'll probably just have a picture of somebody who I want to appear in their dreams. Talk midnight. Where would so you I'll get put that the picture, picture there. Sorry? Where would you get that specific picture? Uh, there's pictures everywhere. Probably on people's, if, on your WhatsApp, I'll take your picture, print it. I'll take, if I want, if I want to appear in your dream, I'll take your picture on, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, and I'll print it. I'll send one of my boys to print it and bring it. So I have pictures lined up in front of me. Mm -hmm. And my candles on and everything, and I'll be burning my incense as well. You know, so as I'm burning my incense, my candles are on with my book. There's a manual for these things. So there's a manual that you, you read some words. And then after reading those words, you speak what you want to speak. There are words that you speak. Those enchantments and those incantations that I spoke about. You speak all those things. Then after speaking all those things, it, 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 you know, it, it just happens. After speaking, you are done. You don't have to fly and go and enter the dream. No, you just do it from your room. You do it and then it's done. So after that, I switch off my candles. I put them back in my bag together with my God. You know, um, yeah. So following morning, I wake up in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. I'll do my sacrifice, check my fowl, slaughter the fowl, spread the blood and all that. So. It comes in different ways. It depends on what you want to do. If, if, if you are my enemy, if you are my enemy and I want to make sure that um, whatever you are doing against me does not work or you are speaking against me and I want you to fall sick, I'll just write your name or I'll probably take your picture and I'll use needles. I'll use needles to pin needles on your picture, put it there, light my candles, burn my incense and I'll begin to speak. So it, it, it came in different, uh, in different ways. Yeah. But now, as you're doing that, where's your girlfriend? As I'm doing that? Yeah. When you're doing those practices, 12 o'clock at night, 6 o'clock in the morning, where is your steady girlfriend at that time? I, I, haven't, I, have, I, I haven't had a, a steady relationship. Okay. The people that you are inviting as one night stands or whoever yeah. would they see these things and where would they be when these things no. happen no if somebody is with me at the time i'll probably uh leave them in the other room and go to my spiritual room where i do my things when i'm alone i can do it in my bedroom but when there's no when there's people around there's a spiritual room for all those things where i'll go kneel down lock the door lock myself in there nobody enters that room even the maid never used to clean that room. Nobody enters in there because people's pictures will be there. People's clothes will be there. You know, just a lot of things will be happening in the room. So I wouldn't want uh, somebody to, you know. Yeah. yeah. But now, I understand the concept of pictures. But now the clothes, how do you get the clothes? If you have not slept with that specific person, where would you get the clothing item? Uh, it, 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 it depends. Let's, for example, there's people who used to come to me and say, um, I'm having a problem with my husband. My husband is cheating on me. I'll tell them, bring your husband's underwear. Mm. So those are some of the clothes that will be inside. Oh, okay. You know, okay. yeah. So somebody says, oh, I have a problem. Uh, there's somebody who wants to kill me. I'll say, bring their, find their whatever, their clothes, their shirt, anything, anything you can find. If you really need help, you'll find it. But now, when you are doing this to yourself, to strengthen yourself, to gain this power, this, this, uh, with all these other things, what are the material things did you acquire? Like how many houses, how many cars? But now this is still in Zim before you came to South Africa. Okay. Well, Zimbabwe, look, with Zimbabwe, it was not quite a lot. In Zimbabwe, I was just living a normal life but above normal, paranormal life, you know, above, yeah. above my, my mates. My mates will be my boys and I'll be there, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, you'll be the king. Yeah, so upon coming but, to East London, I came to East London, started a church in East London. Um, 
the, build, the first building we used in East London, it was pegged within one month. It was full like this. We moved to the second building. It was pegged again. In about three months, we had moved from one building to the next. In about six months, we had moved from probably, we had moved from three buildings. In a year, I can assure you that uh, in one year, anyone who's watching from East London now, I don't think there's anyone who doesn't know me from Eastern Cape or from East London, especially in the church circles. When I would land at uh, East London International Airport, everyone knew that J. Israel is here because my aide, my security, my everybody, my media people, they'll be there taking pictures and we would just pose a scene, you know, then I just, depending on which car I'll be driving on that day, probably a Rolls Royce or a Bentley or or a Q7, you know, or whatever, you know. So upon arriving in East London, the church grew massively, you know. It, 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 it grew in numbers. Thousands of people were flocking in East London. And um, people started traveling from other countries, coming to East London. People were traveling from Joburg, from Cape Town, from Deben, coming to East London because of the things that they would hear, you know, that... Um, that I'll do it. At one point, there's a video on, uh, on, on, on YouTube. I think even Daily Dispatch covered that story. I was praying for people and they were losing weight in church. I think probably more than five, seven, eight, ten women, I prayed for them in church. They, lo they were losing weight. Their, their dresses were falling off. The video is there on YouTube. At one wow. point, I turned water to wine and uh, I told people, going to perform a miracle this miracle is going to be so big that you know even jesus performed it and people flowed in church like this took bottles of water from random people in church shook them turned it to wine and i gave it to people to test and they were telling me you know it's tasting like wine i did a lot of uh, abnormal things in east london to a point where pastors in east london started fighting and saying he's taking our members he's doing this he's doing that but at the end of the day, everything was just occultic related. It was just occultic stuff. It was by the, by 2018 December, we had a 31 31 December all night prayer in East London. There's an annual gospel event that they do in East London where people come in thousands. That gospel event that night was empty because everyone was at our church on that same night. You know, it probably four or five thousand people flocked into that uh, building that night. You, the building could not even accommodate people. Some were outside. I acquired money. I made a lot of money. I made a lot of money. I remember at one point I was staying in a glass house close to the beach in Bonza Bay. Those who know East London, I had a glass house close to the beach in Bonza Bay. I was driving good. I was, I was, look, right, right now I'm, 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 I'm 27 right now. But 27. at the time, yeah, yeah, I'm 27. I'm your sister. <laughs> so um, at the time when... But, but let me ask you this quickly before I, you, you, you continue. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I want you to understand the difference between orchestrated miracles yeah. and occultic miracles. I'm coming to the orchestrated miracles. Okay. I'm coming there now. Just in about five minutes, I'll be coming to the orchestrated miracles. So 2017, um, everything was fine. We did another event again. I invited a man of God from UK. He came. We shut down the whole, the whole street. People were everywhere. Traffic cops had to be there all over the place just to control people. Then after that, 2018, ending of 2017, getting to 2018, that's when I met a man called Alf Lukau. Alf Lukau had a church here in Santin. The man who resurrected uh, the guy that was training oh. at some point. I met that man in 2017, getting to 2018. I told him my problem. I said to him, look, I joined the cult, and I'm trying to come out of this cult. I'm tired because I can't sleep at night. These things are coming after me. My conscience is burning me. I had to, I had to block relations with my family to protect them. They thought maybe I, I didn't want to talk to them, I didn't love them, but I had to even uh, cut communication with my mom because I knew that if I become so connected so much to my mom, they were going to kill her. 
the other would want because they were going to take anything that i loved at the point they were going to take it i had to cut relationship i never used to communicate with my family maybe for like two three years i was i was not in touch with any of them because i i was protecting them from the things that i had gotten myself into that is why right now i'm so crazy about my mom i'm so crazy about my sister and yesterday, you know, I took her somewhere, took her shopping, have fun, because I know that, you know what, uh, this woman is special to me. And at, at the time when she thought I didn't love her, I didn't want her, it was not because of that. It was because I was protecting her from the things that I'd gotten myself into, because those people are very ruthless. They come after your family, they come after you. If you've got children, they'll come after your kids. So it was, it was that bad. So when I met Outlook out, he's a man I used to admire on TV. I met up with him, and then I told him I've got a problem. I joined the cult. I need help. I told him I joined the cult, and uh, I need help, you know. And then he told me, oh, don't worry. I'm going to pray with you. We are going to do things together. So I, I went on to tell him that, look, the more I use the things that I got from where I went is the more I'm connected to these people. So I had to get into a process of trying to detach myself from everything, you know. 2017, 2018, Outlook out introduced me to a certain system. I spoke about this on YouTube everywhere, all over. He introduced me to the orchestrated miracles in 2018. And I performed, I think the, 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 there's a miracle I performed in East London and it was exposed in the Daily Dispatch. Outlook out said to me, I'm going to send people to East London. They're going to be sitting on wheelchairs. As they'll be coming to sit on wheelchairs, you just pray, uh, pretend as if you're praying for them. And then when they stand up, people are going to shout and they'll give you money. You know, there's going to be noise everywhere. So the people came all the way from Jobek. The mistake they did, I even spoke about this at the Sierra Oil Commission, I think last week, and, and those people loved at me a lot. The mistake I did, these people came and they came to act as sick people. But upon their arrival, they went to the beach. They spent the whole day at the beach. And that was not the first time, actually. We had done it before, and this was the second time. So when people saw that, no, man, the J Israel that we know has never performed this kind of miracle. It was so suspicious. So there are people who became so nosy and they started investigating me. So when these people were coming, they already knew the BNB that they were going to stay. So they followed them with, the, uh, with journalists. They took pictures at the beach. Then when they came to church, when I now told them, stand up, you then, you know, they took pictures. Then the following day, they took pictures and they put it out on daily dispatch. It was very bad. Everywhere, it was on front page. Everyone was talking about it and people were happy. Yeah, your pastor, we told you, but we never stopped. He told me, no, 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 don't worry. You don't blink. When, such, when something like that happens, you don't blink. We are going to bring more people again so that people will really see that these are real miracles. So we kept on doing that. To a point where 20, uh, end of, uh, uh, beginning of 2019, end of 2018, I was feeling empty. I was feeling really empty because there's this occultic thing I'm doing. Now, um, the life that I'm living, I don't like it. I am on drugs and I'm preaching at the same time. When it comes to alcohol, I am terrible, you know. When it comes to, I used to spend most of my time here in Johannesburg. I'll come to Jobek, spend the whole weekend partying Friday, Saturday, partying the whole night. Sunday morning, I'll catch a flight to go and preach in East London in the morning. High on drugs hangover on alcohol, and I'll go and preach. I started feeling empty. I started feeling... One thing about me, one thing I know is that I think I, th I really have a gift. I think. I think I really have a gift from God. And I started looking back where I, when I started and all the things that I was doing, everything that I did, the occultic that I entered into, the do as I say that I introduced, where I'll just put the oil on my tongue, and if I tell you sleep, you sleep. If I tell you wake up, you wake up. If I, if I take the towel that is called a do as I say towel, it has a red towel, throw it on you, you pass out. Then I, I, would, I would sell this towel to people. Take this towel, bring money. 
go and command whatever you want to command it will come to you is a do as i say you say it does you say it does if anything if you want a woman who's been refusing denying you all these years just take this uh, oil put it on your tongue go and propose again if you want a car that you've been trying to buy and look at times it will happen people will come back and say oh yes it has happened this and that so it was just a whole lot of things you know the oils that people buy those are demonic oils before those oils are brought to the people we there are enchantments that are done on those oils they are incantations there are evil words that are spoken on those oils those are very highly demonic oils and when they come and tell you this is an anointing oil you use it on your head you use it on your body you're going to be healed there is nothing like that you're making your situation even worse than you were all the water that they will tell you this is anointed water from nigeria tb joshua false prophet is not from god he's one of the false prophets killed a lot of south africans at the time you know um there's a building that collapsed in nigeria now here you don't enter let me speak don't stop me you just sit there and watch <laughs> There's a building that collapsed in Nigeria. If he was a true prophet, he was going to see that building was going to collapse and he was going to save lives of people. Everything, most of the things that he does, I've exposed him before. There, there's people who used to work for him. I've brought them to my platform. They have spoken about the mermaids that they would go and swim with. They, they have spoken about the... Hold on, excuse. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, Papa. Excuse the what? Mermaids, mermaids. Half, half human, half fish. Where do they get mermaids? There's a video that you should watch. It's on, it's on my Facebook, I think, or on my YouTube, somewhere there. Where do they get the mermaids? Well, as for where do they get the mermaids, I don't know. But this is what the person spoke about. The same way you are talking to me now is the same way that I spoke to somebody who used to work there. And this is exactly how she was explaining things that look. You, you, uh, you would sleep with women before service, you would do this, you would go and swim naked with mermaids, you would go and, you know, swim naked in some pools, afterwards you go, you know, the miracles, some of the miracles are fake, they are lying and whatnot, just a whole lot of things. But okay, rewind, 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 Papa, rewind. <laughs> <laughs> I want to understand. Who was sleeping with mermaids? Uh, TB Joshua. In the church or his house? Or no, no, no. The, the lady didn't specify, but she said in the pool where the went, you know, uh, you'll be there with all these funny, you know, funny human beings there in the pool enjoying himself with them. Then afterwards, he goes to church. Do you believe that? Well, you see, um, it knowing what you know, knowing what you know, yeah, do you believe it? It, it sounds unbelievable, but knowing what I know. I believed it. That is why I even brought her to come and speak about it. Because I believe every word that she said. And how did you meet this girl? Uh, she contacted me, uh, you know, via social media. She told me she's got a story to tell. I have, I have interviewed a lot of people, by the way. I have interviewed people who were used to fake miracles. People who were used for a lot of things in church. But in the church circles. And in the process, I've acquired a lot of enemies just like you. <laughs> Let me breathe for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's reconvene. Okay. They sleep with mermaids for what? For power. Spiritual power. How do you breed a mermaid? Come again? How do you breed a mermaid? I think that's a question I would also, you know, like to get answers, you know, to. So, uh, but look, this is, these are things that are happening. The same, the same way you spoke about snakes. Someone will be wondering, um, how do you how do you breed a snake? How do you how how do you sleep but with a snake? But a snake is easy to find. I'm asking this because a mermaid is not an everyday thing. A snake you can find exactly. anywhere. Exactly. You can go to the zoo, 
You can go to breeders. There are people who are breeders online. You just buy a snake the same way you buy a dog. They're breeders. So it's an easy thing to find because you see if it I, everywhere. If I had seen this with my own eyes. But what happened at some point was that um, uh, I went to Ghana and we went to the sea. When we went to the sea, this is what I saw with my own eyes, not the mermaid that I saw. We went to the sea and there is a woman from the sea that I was supposed to be introduced to, you know, so that I can be married to this woman. And after I'm married to this woman, she was going to become my wife. Meaning to say, she'll be giving me everything that I want in terms of spiritual power, spiritual everything, but she's a woman from the sea. So we went to the sea, we stood by the sea, and then when, you, when we go to the sea, there are words. That they that they spoke words that they spoke and the waters will come and gather you know and everything words that they spoke but unfortunately when the woman appeared she just appeared for like maybe five ten seconds and then she was gone and then they told me that no she has rejected you this this is this is something that probably some pastors know about their pastors were not married at the age of 30 35 40 they're not married they can never get married because spiritually there's a spiritual marriage that they entered into. It's a covenant that they entered into, a covenant of power, covenant of wealth. You become so wealthy in such a way that you can have anything you want. You drive whatever you want to drive, but you can never get married because that woman is a very jealous woman. The day you get married, she'll kill that woman that you will marry. If you try to be in a marriage again, she'll kill that woman you want to marry. Hence, most of the men who entered into that covenant, they end up having one night stand, one night stand, one night stand, one end. No matter how much you try to be a good woman to such a man, you can never be a good woman because it is deeper than what you think. It is more spiritual. There's a spiritual covenant that nobody can break. No matter how beautiful, how pretty, even if you can cook the best meal for the man, he will make sure that he doesn't love you. He will just keep you at a distance and call you whenever he wants to sleep with you and give you money and you go your way. Because spiritually, there is a spiritual marriage that is there. Are you in a spiritual marriage? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Come on, I'm just, I'm just 27. No, 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 I'm just, I, you know, I'm just fooling around with you because... <laughs> Man, oh man. Um, so, when you saw this woman, what did you see? What does she look like? Uh, she just came out of the water. Long hair, white dress, you know. Very beautiful. Very, very beautiful woman. Did you very see the, the fish tail? Was it a mermaid? Or no, I mermaid? did not see. I didn't see the lower part. It was just the upper part that I saw when she came out of the water then. After some few seconds, she just disappeared back into the water. Then they told me, no, uh, this means that she has rejected you. So you're not yet ready for this level. These things have so got levels. You, you go... If, you know. if they had accepted you, what would she... What would she have done in that moment if she had re re um, accepted you? I, 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 they never told me what she would have done. But they told me that if she had accepted you, then you would have been meeting with her, probably she'll be coming to you at night. In your dreams, when you're sleeping, she'll be coming to sleep with you, but you'll be dreaming of it, but it will be happening in the physical. So when you wake up in the morning, this is actually very real. There are women who are watching now. You go to bed, you sleep, and then when you wake up in the morning, you find your, your private parts wet, as if something was happening at night, you know? Uh, but you were not intimate with anybody. It's a spiritual, it's spiritual sex. You know, this is something different, but not part of this conversation. So she, she, she was going to be coming, sleeping with me at night. Then anytime I want, whatever, I'll talk to her. Spiritually, she would make it happen. But the jealous part was what I was warned about, to say, you will never get married. If you get married, she will kill that woman. So according to you, what was the worst thing? you did and felt like this will be the end of me if I continue? The worst? Yeah. You see, um, 
the, the, the occult is like drugs. It's addictive. You just want to keep go you just want to keep getting more. You just want to keep getting more. You just want to keep getting more and more and more and more and more and more. For example, when I met um, when I met when I met um, when I met with Outlook Al, Outlook Al told me straight up, he said, you know what? Um, we are going to make a lot of money. And we did together, we made a lot of money, we made millions together, me and that guy. You know, so he said, we are going to make a lot of money and um, I want you to know that, but before we do that, uh, there are processes that you have to take. So there's a video that is actually on YouTube. Many people thought it was just a normal ordination of pastors. We're wearing long robes, uh, long red robes, thousands of us, red robes that were very long. And he was wearing a white robe with some golden, um, golden uh, print on it with a very long stick like that, that he had. It's a video, it's there on YouTube, I'll, I'll send you the link. So what he did, he, had, he also had a very long sword, a sword that he had. So all of us were coming and then we, we, we kneel down before him, then he takes the sword, he puts it on your head, he speaks what he speaks, then you go. Next person comes, he, he pulls the sword, he speaks what he speaks. So after that, you know, we met uh, privately, he gave me um, a bracelet that he gave me, and then he said, that is the bracelet of power. He gave me a stick. I used to have a walking stick. Many people who know me, they know what I'm talking about. I used to have a walking stick that had a Medusa head on it. Uh, the other one was a Stefano Ricci one. The other one was, uh, it had a lion head. The other one had an eagle head. So it, it, it was just, I, I used to carry that stick everywhere. I, 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 everywhere I would go. Why? We, we, we made money. We, we, we made a lot of money. Why did you carry the stick? It was a stick of power. It was a stick of authority. Anywhere you go, anywhere I would go, I would carry that stick. And I would command respect in that place. I will command authority in that place. Once I get into a place, everyone would know that there's someone here. And people, a lot of people kept on asking themselves, who's this guy? What does he do? Who's this guy? Well, because I'll be walking around probably with maybe like five, six bodyguards wherever I'll be going, carrying my stick and whatnot, you know, with flying private jets, driving Rolls Royce, driving Bentley, driving this and that, you know, going for holidays. There's actually an article where they did, um, Daily Dispatch did a, an, an analysis of my life and they were saying this flamboyant pastor was living a, a, a dream, what, 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 he's going on holidays and what. And, just a whole lot of things that they were talking about. But look, at the end of the day, I was empty. There was nothing in me. People have been defrauded. Outlook how is fake, by the way. The, the resurrection miracle that he did, it was fake. That is something that I'm actually working with the CRO Commission right now to expose. The resurrection what, is, what about what you did? What about what you Come did? Again? I, I have spoken about I've spoken about what I did so many times. I've, I've there's videos of things that I've said about myself, what I did, this and that, you know, the occultic side, the miracles, the whatnot, just a whole lot of things that I've spoken about. Okay. What I want yes. to know, and I think a lot of people would be dying to know as well, right? This now goes back to I mean, you have mentioned this in terms of the spiritual stuff that you used to do and the miracles, right? Um, yeah. I want to know about the, 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 the transfer of energy from you to a female that you're sleeping with and okay. what would be the repercussions? What would you see happen to that person after you have a sexual encounter with them? And when do you know it's enough when, you're when you have done enough on one woman to go to the next? When you know that you have taken what you've taken and you need to go to the next, what would you see happen? Um, it's only now that I'm trying to, um, get myself into a stable relationship, you know, after everything that I've been through and after everything that I've done. Meeting up with women to me was, uh, you know, I always loved to go for the, the women that everyone thought, you know, this is, this woman is difficult, that that's where I wanted. That's what I wanted to be. To me, it was a challenge, you know. Then when it comes to the spiritual side, I can tell you that I had not gotten to the part of um, 
probably sacrificing the things of women and all that. But I can tell you that sleeping with women definitely had an effect on them because sex is spiritual. Sex is more spiritual than physical. So any, any woman that I would sleep with, they'll probably have the same energy that I had of sex. They'll probably have the lust that I had, you know, of wanting to just sleep around with everybody they meet and whatnot and wanting to, wanting to you know, just wanting more and more sex. If I would, if I would call a woman, I would, let's say I sleep with a woman today, then, not now. Yeah, yeah. If, if I would sleep with a woman today, I, 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 I gain control over that woman. Spiritually, physically, mentally, I, I, I would gain control over that woman in such a way that if I, if I would call her at 1 a.m. and say, where are you? Even if she's with somebody, she would leave that person and come to me. That's how deep it went. Because it's not something that I wanted to do. It's not something that I would do. But because of who I was and what I had operating in me, it would definitely be transferred to the next person. To a point where some of them would even start having nightmares, especially those who were spiritually upright. They would call me and say, look, I had a dream. And in this dream, you were carrying a knife. You wanted to kill me. And I said, no, 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 I would never do that. But I knew that it's not me. It's what I have and where I'm coming from, you know. Because what I carry and what is on me has got a very, very negative impact on every woman that I meet. That is why it was difficult for me to be in a stable relationship. 2016, uh, 2016, I almost got married. It never happened. 2017, I almost got married. It never happened. Then I just decided to forget about the whole marriage thing up until I sought myself out. So right now, look, I'm not perfect. I'm a work in progress. Uh, I'm still trying to find my way in God. I'm still trying to position myself where I'm supposed to be. But I can tell you that I'm in a better place, you know. Spiritually, I'm in a better place. But with all the women that I met, when I began to speak about these things, some of them, I called them, I said, look, I know that something might have happened to you. This is how I want you to pray. One, two, three, do this and this and this and this and this. I had a problem of women obsessing over me, obsessing seriously, I'm telling you. It's, it was not, because, it's not even what you think. It was deeper than that. It was deep. Trust me, it was very deep. Once I would sleep with a woman, she would definitely, definitely, definitely get obsessed because it's not even the, the sex or anything, but I knew that it's what I have and what I possess and what I carry, you know? It was deep like that. It's, it was not even about sex only. I had people in church who loved me in such a way that some loved me more than they loved their own parents because of how I am, what I have in me, and how I would use it, you know, to command everybody around. I had 50 year olds, 60 year olds, if they see me, they'll bow down. If they see me, they'll kneel. If they see me, they'll lay flat on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the floor. I'm not saying this to spite them, but I'm saying this because the day that I almost committed suicide was my wake-up call. The day that I got so... I was fed up because I was looking for help. All the pastors that I went to looking for help, they couldn't help me. All the pastors that I called looking for assistance, none of them were able to help me. And you had all, all the, the money. Prophets. Sorry? And you had all the money, you couldn't get help. Look, I had all the money. I had all the money that I... I, I had all the money that I, you know, I had. I, and during my days, before I think before 2019, maybe let's say from beginning of 2019, before I deleted everything that was on my Instagram, I deleted all the cards that were on my Instagram. I deleted every picture that I ever posted of myself looking flashy or trying to do this, maybe going to Gucci to buy what. I deleted everything. From my now, Instagram now, to my YouTube uh, to my Facebook, not only that, I know where you're going. Yeah, did you return the I things took back? All to... the clothes. I took all the clothes. I had maybe let's say I had around six to seven hundred suits. I 
yeah, I had six to seven hundred suits. My my wardrobe was just because whenever I would buy clothes, I, I wouldn't go for shopping and come back with one pair of shoes. I would come back with a lot of stuff. So I gave away all my suits. I gave away all my clothes, all my track suits, all my shoes, my sneakers, everything. I gave it away. Not only that, I cleared everything. It got to a point where if I would sleep and I see something that reminds me of the cult, I'll take that thing and find somebody to call to say, come and take this right now. I'm giving it to you as a gift. Why didn't you burn it? Sorry? Why didn't you burn it? What's the point of burning something that somebody else needs? Those things... Didn't you feel like you're transferring the energy to another person? No. Those were just clothes that I used to wear. There was nothing spiritual on those things. It was but just now, a of you wash those people with were things. receiving them. You wash with things, you put things on your tongue. Don't you think the same way they say these things to the anointing oil and everything else, all of those things now trans transition to your clothes? I had, I had stuff that I bent. I had gowns that I bent. I had uh, my red gown that Alphokau gave me, I bent it. I had uh, my uh, other black gowns that I was using whenever I'll be in my spiritual room, my white gowns, I bent them. I had towels, oils, and a different... But with clothes, I just felt like, you no, know, you know what? If It's like money. It's like money. The fact that you are receiving money from somebody who's a satanist does not mean that that money is going to have an effect on you. If you're a prayerful person, you definitely pray the satanism of the money. Because greater is him that is in you than the one in the world. If God is, is with you and if God is in you, you will definitely not be affected by whatever that I'll give to you. So I would tell people, everybody knew, everybody knew, I'll tell them, look, have this, have this, but pray, pray for these things, pray for these things. I had cars that I'd call, I, I would call people, look, come get this car, I don't want it. People who gave me those cars, some who bought me those cars, I'll call them, come take this car back, come take this car back. Come, take this car back. Come, take this back. Come, take this back. I have to start afresh and start from scratch. Um, I've got one more thing to ask you. Maybe okay. a couple, but this is one important one, right? Because a lot of um, people who might be watching this most probably are females, right? Okay. So once you have encountered a person who practices in cults, how do you now cleanse yourself as a female or a male who has slept with a person who's in a cult? What are the practices that are effective without you going to a priest, without you going to a healer or a traditional healer? What is the one thing that you believe would wash away the things that you put in other women? Um, prayer. Nothing beyond prayer. If you're watching and you've encountered somebody who's, uh, who's in the occultic world and probably knowingly or unknowingly, the Psalms 51. Psalms 51 is a prayer of repentance. The Psalms 91. Psalms 91 is a prayer of protection. Psalms 51 talks about uh, being washed with high soap and everything. Once you pray that prayer, once you pray the whole chapter, you start from the beginning up to the end, it will help you and let you know how you should pray, how you should deal with whatever that you have, you know, gotten yourself into, not only with women that have been slept with, but even in church. There are people who are in churches where you are led by occultic pastors, you know. Occultic pastors are leading you. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. You will never even know that they are occultic. You identify them by the rings. They wear very big rings like that. They are very big rings that they wear. Some have got some red things on them. Some have got blue things. They wear long chains. They are chains that they wear with, uh, with a cross. And they normally put the cross in a pocket. Those are some of the things we use to identify these people. There are signs that they use. For example, there's a sign that uh, somebody who's watching right now, it's, it's this sign. There's this sign. This is a sign uh, that is used by occultic pastors. Somebody will say, oh, no, but it's uh, a, is it a Keza Chiefs or something. But look, in the occultic world, if you do something without... If you do something ignorantly, it will never have an effect on you. So these people do what they do with knowledge of what they are doing. 
the, the signs that they raise in church. Some even do the signs in church. You know, uh, different things. There's regalias that they give to people. You know, there's uniforms that they give you. Before they give you those uniforms, they are dedicated to demons. They are dedicated to the gods that they worship before they give them to you. So you just need to stay woke and know that the devil is out there, you know, to devour your life, uh, you know. Okay. Let me open the comment section and look at the questions real quickly. Okay. 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 Can you see that um, comment? Uh, I can see that comment. He's a married man, that's true. Um, but the fact that he's a married man does not mean that he's not a false prophet. He's a, he's, he's a married false prophet. If you go on YouTube, go and find out all the videos that I've done on Al-Fukau, where I was talking about everything that is, you know, the fake miracles, the occultic and everything and all those things, you will get to understand. I don't blame you, though. There's thousands of people who are like you who follow people blindly without really having an understanding of who they are. Did I read the whole question? Or, or, or... Yeah. Okay. Um, here's another one. Repeat the part of the oil. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, the oils, the oils come in different, uh, in different shapes, in different colors. They come in red. They'll tell you this is a dangerous oil. They tell you this is a, a bed to sender oil. They'll tell you this is a, uh, you know, a fire oil. They come in different packages. But remember, the main purpose of them giving you these oils is to also initiate you into themselves. Whatever that they were initiated into, when they give you the oils, you now form a part of them. That is why it becomes very difficult for you to disagree with them. Even if the pastor is caught pants down, you will still say it is the devil. You are brainwashed. You have been initiated into, into, into whatever, that they, you know, whatever that they are doing. So you will never oppose them. You are now one in spirit. So they do that to control you, to control your mind, control everything about you. Um, how does one tell between... A wedding ring and a spiritual ring. Spiritual rings are normally very big. I haven't come across a spiritual ring that is small. They are normally very big. And they are not put on the marriage finger because once you put a spiritual ring on the marriage finger, then it means you are now jeopardizing your marriage and you are doing something that is not right. It's normally put on the right hand. They normally put it on this, uh, on this finger here, on the right hand. This is where they normally put the those spiritual rings. At times, it depending on who gives it to them, they put it on this finger here. So that's the difference. Uh, also, what is the purpose of the horn that some pastors blow in church? Is it a cult? Is it a what? A culty uh, thing? Okay. I think you want to say, is it a cult thing? Okay. Um, I used to have that one as well, but I bent it. There are actually uh, pictures of myself wearing a long blue robe, and I was blowing that horn at some point. Uh, it, 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 it's part of the... It's, part it's of like the a trance. Hypno it's things that bring you into a trance. It, 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 there's a word for it. It's part of hypnotizing people. Once yeah. you hear the sound of that trumpet, you are hypnotized. In a way that as soon as you hear the sound, you are hypnotized, that people will start dancing anyhow. People you start doing things that after church you ask yourself, what was I doing? So even very giving briefly, money, you can even go and give all your money because you are now hypnotized. Very briefly, how did you get out of the cult? What were the thing what what are the specific things that you did to break away from that specific cult where you you were initiated into? I think um, I wanted to get out of the cult, but I didn't know how. Because you don't just get out of a cult. So how did you do it? With me, it was more of, there's a video on my YouTube channel. It's, it, it's written, The Vision of Rapture. In that video, I explained how I, um, 
how I encountered rapture in the dream for like five minutes. It was a five minute trance where I saw a man and the man stood next to me and he told me, look around and see everyone. Everyone you see here has been missed by rapture. I saw people groaning in pain, people crying with so much tears. People that I knew, pastors, family members, I saw people. And the previous night before that dream, I was on the dark web on the internet, communicating with people on the internet last year. On the internet, communicating with people I didn't know, assisting me to commit suicide. Because I felt like everything that I've done, I can't forgive myself enough. Everything I've done, the nasty things that I've done, the ruthless stuff that I've done, I could not forgive myself. So the only solution was to commit suicide. And the following okay, Jay, night... Okay, Jay, yeah. answer the question. How did you get out? I'm explaining that part. So after the vision of rapture, that was how I woke up the following morning. When I woke up the following morning, everything that I used to feel, the edge of wanting to do things, it was gone. I embarked on a, uh, uh, on, a, uh, on a session of prayer. I went on a prayer, prayer marathon where I was praying by myself, you know, praying myself out of these things, calling other people, helping me out with prayers and whatnot. People that are not even pastors, but they were just intercessors. That was how I got out of the cult, through prayer and uh, through the vision that I had. We just killed everything that I had loved for. Did you ever reconcile with Tabisi Leralawa, Ralawe, who was the first person to expose you and you were cruel to? I gave that woman a public apology on my Facebook. I had thousands of people watching me the day. I invited a live just like this. And I gave her a public apology on Facebook in front of everybody. The video is there on Facebook. The woman that this person is talking about. Would you I apologize myself. again? Sorry? Would you apologize again if need be, if she had not accepted your apology? Um, well, you see, because I'm, I'm in a process of uh, repentance, I'm in a process of, uh, you know, making things right with everybody. I even closed down the church. I closed down everything. I'm not preaching. I'm focusing on my business. I'm focusing on making money for myself, for my family through business and all that. So what 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 business? If, what no business? that's 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 is it private? That. No, it's 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 legitimate business, but um I, I don't I don't um I don't feel comfortable talking about it. Okay. No, that's yeah. still that's still your right to be I think the point yeah. of the question was just to say, are you completely out of cults and are you completely have you moved away from preaching to do other stuff i think that was the right question i have i have done that although i still you know um because of my story i still share my story with people i still motivate people out there i still talk to people i still do my live broadcast to just talk to people give people you know uh, 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 uh the reality of the word the reality of how things are supposed to be and stuff like that but as for do, church, you, do you still go I, to church now? Is there a specific church that you go to now? No. The way you're not, not preaching? Even, no, no, no. There's no church that I attend. I pray for myself. I pray in my house because I, I feel like all the pastors, if probably 99% of the pastors that are out there, they're all in it for money. They're not in it for the souls. They're not in it for saving God's people. So I, I am not going to church. Okay, there's a question here. Does this cult only work on blacks or even other races? Uh, even on, there's, there's different cults. With, um, with, with the white people, mostly white people, they are part of the voodoo stuff, the um, uh, magic, and, uh, uh, you know, there's different practices to these things. You know, so it, it works on everybody. It works on all races, Indians, uh, whites. It, it works on everybody. Once a person leaves such a church, does the prophets have power, powers over those people? Well, it depends on your spirituality. If you are a prayerful person, there's no way you can be controlled by these people. But if you're not a prayerful person, they'll definitely control you. So the key is to pray. The key is to pray. The key is to seek the face of God. That's the key. 
Another question, can one get out of these cults and still keep the riches that, they, that come with it? I don't think it's practical. Because once you get out of the cults and you keep the riches, then it doesn't make any sense. Once you're out, you have to denounce everything. You denounce the gods. You denounce the riches. You denounce everything you acquired through all those unscrupulous ways. So that is how scripture operates. That is how scripture works, you know. Don't you have those cult people haunting you? I think he answered this question. He said yes sometimes. So that's why you need to pray consistently. Yeah. Mm -mm, guys, guys, can we move away from calling out people's names because they're not here to defend themselves? So we exactly. can't be saying this person, that person. It's not number one. It's none of our business. It has to be about Jay and his story. And the more we add people's names, it becomes a exactly. gossip site. And I'm not here exactly. to gossip about people. I want Jay to narrate his experience, talk about what he knows, and not bash other people. So can but we not just, add just to say something names? on that? I've met Kushiri. He's a wonderful person. I've met him in person. I've seen him in person. You know, he's not someone I know from far. He's a wonderful person in person. You know, everyone, no one is perfect, but we're all working towards perfection. Okay, this person says, not a question, but you haven't changed, Mr. J. Israel. What does that mean? Uh, I think I should say thank you, God. Probably that's God speaking. <laughs> because only God can know whether I've changed or not not a mere human being um nah guys we're not going to talk about other pastors names here i'm not going to allow that can you please not answer that okay um i'm not going to allow other people's names on this conversation because it has to be speak strictly about you um um um, I think most of the questions here he answered, how he got out of the cult, he apologized to the people he hurt, and he's still working on himself. He's not in, in a cult anymore, he explained that. Um, he's, he has his own businesses now that he's doing, that he's doing privately. Um, and then this question, how do you join a cult? We're not here to promote cults, so I will not let him answer that. Um, aren't you afraid of dying for exposing people? This is a question from Tibbs98. Aren't you afraid of dying for exposing people? Once, look, I'm not exposing people, but I'm sharing my story. And if you're part of my story, I'm, unfortunately, you know, I'll have to talk about you, you know, that is, you know, so I'm not afraid, you know, fear is, 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 is not in me. I'm not afraid They all. say, I don't believe he's 27. I think he's 35. So That's do you a have compliment. a soccer age? That's a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> do you have a soccer age? Oh, man. A lot of people say that they actually don't believe I'm 27. But yeah, yeah. Okay, here's a misconception. So clearly it was easy to leave the cult and everything is okay. Like nothing happened. Uh, clearly it was easy to leave the cult. It was not easy. It was not easy at all. I had to sacrifice a lot of things, you know, for me to get to that point of saying I'm leaving. Because once you leave the cult, it's not just a matter of praying to say, oh, now I have prayed, so I'm out. No. There's a lot that comes with it. It's not as easy as I have said it or the way I've, I've spoken about it. It's actually way deeper than that, you know. Sure. Okay, I've opened the comment section and I'm going to leave it on for one minute. So if you see something, respond to it. If you don't want to respond, pass. And then after uh, the one my... minute, I will end the conversation. I think we've said too much today. There's also yeah. there's a part one and part two. Um, so Sam, Sam Zulu says, Pastor, I want you. Do you have a girlfriend now? Um, not really. I don't. <laughs> okay, I here's don't. A, a, a comment. I'm going to pin this comment. Please read it. Mm, please answer my question. Does Akumbe or Agumbe really mean fake person? Uh, no, it doesn't. It was just a code name. Akumbe. It's just a... 
it, it was a code name, code name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, here's another one. Pastor, are you writing a book about this? I'm writing a book. Uh, and please don't address me as pastor. Just address me as Jay. You know, I'm very much uncomfortable when I'm addressed as pastor or whatnot. I, I feel much at ease when you just call me Jay or brother Jay, whatever. You know, just call me Jay. It's fine. I think I prefer it that way. Okay. They're asking soul ties and break and breaking those how do you break soul ties ah that's a long teaching that's a very long teaching but um, it all comes back to prayer again it comes back to prayer but that's it it comes long teaching. it comes back to prayer okay yeah. they say since you use spirits did you see angels um i saw demons <laughs> i saw demons a lot of them a, a lot of them. At some point, I, I had uh, a bit of some dwarfs, you know, appearing in one of my services, but they only appeared once. Okay, here's another one before we end the conversation. Hmm. Did you use guys for your rituals and how successful uh, Jay, the girls you slept with, did you use condom and did it, uh, did they fall pregnant? Uh, I, I've, I've got a daughter, by the way. I've got a daughter. Yeah. From away? From away? I've got a daughter. Um, the mother of my child got, got pregnant in 2018. And um, we, uh, yeah, I have a daughter. So... I don't know of any other women that fell pregnant. I don't have but any other women that fell pregnant. But you condoms used in this process? Well, I, I, I did. I used a lot of condoms. I did. I, I did use a lot of them. Okay. Yeah. Um, what would your last message be to everyone? Just... Uh... Just to end off the conversation, what would what would you like people to know about you now? The Jay now, who is he? What is he trying to achieve? Now that obviously you're looking for a girlfriend, um, <laughs> what are you trying to to teach people? And what and what do you want people to see in you now that's different? Well, I, I don't want people to see something different in me, but I just want to become a better person than I was yesterday. Each and every day, I believe, is a day for me to become a better me, you know. I'm spending so much time with my family, something that I never used to do. I'm spending time with my family. I'm trying to, you know, fend for my family, for my mom, my sister, my brother, you know. And um, I'm, I'm really, really trying so hard to... I even called a family gathering the other day. I called my uncles, my aunts, my other brothers, cousins, just for us to have a family get together. I'm trying to become a better person to me, not to people, you know, mm. to me and to my family, which is what is more, more important right now. But um, yeah, I'm really trying. I'm, I'm also trying to open people's eyes as well to know that, look, not all these churches that you go to, uh, what you think, not all these pastors you see claiming that they're from God, they're not what you think. They are so just open your eyes and use the spirit of discernment according to the bible that uh, you know he gave us the spirit of discernment that anytime you get to a place learn to discern spirits before you can uh, fall for whatever that they are doing don't fall for miracles don't fall for prophecies don't fall for signs and wonders but go for the word because the word is the one that will transform your life and change your life for you to be a better person Well, thank you so much, Jay. Um, I appreciate your honesty. Um, I do hope that the people you have wronged along the way will forgive you. Um, and I do hope that you, you do get closer to God in your journey. And I, I believe in time you will fully understand why you had to do what you did and the reason why God allowed it to happen. And I hope you will forgive yourself in the process. Um, I, 
I do believe there's a place for forgiveness in the world. If you're honest about your indiscretions, I do the, believe there's a place. And um, I'm so glad that you are going to the people that you hurt that you can still find and you're apologizing and you're trying to rectify the mistakes. Um, you are still fairly young. You're under 30. There's still a lot more that I do believe that you're yet to achieve. Sure. Um, I really wish you all the best. Um, obviously, we will be looking out for you. And I think from this life, people will be keeping a close eye, eye on you so that you don't go back to the churches. Um, but thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. And thank you guys so much for watching. There's a part one and this was part two. Yeah. Um, I need to let you go. It is 10 o'clock. I've had you. you. I've had you for three hours from seven o'clock. So thank you, thank you so so much. We really do appreciate it, and I hope God has mercy on your soul. Thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you so much for having me, and thanks to everyone who's tuning in. Thank you. You are doing a great work. God bless. You. Thank you. I'm trying my best, and I hope that um, young people start using their intuition more. You know. Um, they start listening more. We're not saying be scared of the world, be scared of everybody or, or be scared yeah. of rich men or whatever, but we're saying be careful. Um, ask questions, you know. Um, don't, don't, don't just take things face value because there's money involved and somebody's giving you money. I've got um, a question, just one question yeah. before I go. I don't, you see, a lot of people, I just want to ask this. What is more important, your star, your destiny, your life, or the 20,000 runs that you get after a one-night stand? You don't understand. After one-night stand you, you've had with a wealthy man, he gives you 20,000, he gives you 50,000, and then you go enjoy it. You buy one bag or two bags and one pair of shoes and it's finished. But... What is it that you have exchanged for that 50k? Think about it. Yep. With that being said, good night, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next family meeting. Good night. Bye. Thank you, Jay. Good night. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye.